Welcome to Your Health is Your Wealth. My name is Argo Duenas, and I'm your host for today. I'm also the owner of Back to Nature Health and Wellness Center. We have served the Annapolis, Baltimore, D.C., Eastern Shore, Virginia area for over 30 years. We offer colon hydrotherapy, Reiki, ionic foot baths, and nutritional counseling, and nutritional supplementations. I am truly honored and humbled to have as my special guest today, Dr. Stephanie Reed, the founder of Your Healing Place from Baltimore. Not only is Dr. Steph a naturopath, but she is a lecturer, a TV and radio personality, an artist, a singer, oh, yeah. an actress, <laughs> and she truly is my trusted friend and mentor. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Reed, for taking time out from your daily scheduled to be here with me today. Well, thank you. Now, before we talk about this riveting book, it's raw, riveting, and truly real and empowering. From Panic to Empowerment, How to Embrace an Angel When You Expected a Baby. Before we talk about this masterpiece, okay? Let's talk about Dr. Reed. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your family and your practice? Yes, well, I'm originally from Philadelphia and I have a brother and I have a wonderful husband and I have three grown-up children. Kevin is 30, Corey is 28, and Diamond is 23. And I have a love for fish. <laughs> I love fish. I have a pond in my yard, I have fish in the house. I have two cats and an English Mastiff, so I'm, with all this stuff I'm doing, I'm just, you know, just a Philly girl from Temple <laughs> University. What can I say? Well, I grew up in Philly. My mom's a pastor in Philly. She's mm -hmm. been uh, living in Philadelphia, oh my God, since 2021. Okay. So I'm back and forth to Philly. Uh -huh. And I have sisters and brothers and nieces. They're still there in Philly. So, mm -hmm. hey, hey to Philly. Hey, and Philly. I'm glad the Eagles won. Yes, uh -huh. go Eagles. Yeah, go Eagles. <laughs> so... Um, Dr. Reed, tell us um, what gave you the inspiration for this book? I went through, at the time I thought, the most traumatic, horrific experience in my entire life. And if I could have paid you to throw me under a bus to kill me, I would have given you my life savings because the pain was so great. I didn't know if I was going to survive it. Wow. Once I did feel as though I was at a place that I could breathe again. I wanted to share the lessons because I realized so many women mm -hmm. have the same experience. Many of my patients have this same experience, but they've never told anybody. But the experience has manifested in health problems. And when I was able to share with them that their health problems is a correlating to trauma, mm -hmm. I felt that this particular type of trauma needed a voice. And so I wrote the book. And so who are you speaking for in this book? You just said it, but elaborate a little bit more. I am speaking to women, yes. mothers, yeah. people who grieve, who have grieved the loss of a loved one, specifically for women who've had babies and they've lost their babies. That is the worst experience ever, not because it's a baby, but you constantly mourn the what ifs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every Easter I go through Macy's and I say, I would have bought that dress for my daughter. Yeah. I still have the mm, that I want to shop for her. Mm -hmm. And a lot of mothers, I'm sure, go through that. Mm -hmm. And so this book is for anyone who suffered a loss and they feel as though they can't get over it or they can't express mm -hmm. it. Because not expressing this very deep hurt right. is the fertile ground for disease. Well, I am a true believer because I actually had two major surgeries myself when I was like in my early 30s. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. when I look back on my life and uh, I just kind of remember what traumatic experience was happening, what was going on in my life at that time mm -hmm. preceding the, the health crisis. Yep. And it was always related to something traumatic, yes. some emotional stress and trauma that I suppressed mm -hmm. and didn't know how to cope with or didn't know how to deal with. One of them was in the military. I was in the military, it was very traumatic. I was the only female. 
I was sent to school with all men for nine months. When I went to my duty station, I was with all men. Mm -hmm. And this was very tra traumatic for me. You know, it was stressful. Uh, that was really my first encounter with racism, sexism, mm -hmm. discrimination. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was, but it affected, once again, my female organs, as yes. you say, because you're going you're gonna to elaborate on that. So in the book, in this book, you really bear your heart. You bear your soul. You speak things that many of us would probably Never wouldn't say. even <laughs> say, and we just stuff it, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why I just, I love you because, I mean, you'll come out and say it. I might think it, uh -huh. but you'll come out and say it, but I'm learning now, you yeah. know, to speak yeah. your truth, stand in your power, right? Yeah, stand in your power. So um, in power. why is it necessary to be transparent? We know everything about everything outside of ourselves. As a practitioner, you are a professional at what you do. An accountant is gonna be phenomenal at, at that. A teacher is gonna, a professor is gonna be all that. But when it comes to knowing who you are, we have no clue. It's a lot of work. It's a lot yes, of work to get to you, know who you are. Absolutely. But the, 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 the way that you get to know yourself is to examine and to allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and then process it. But we can't process it because we've learned, put your big girl panties on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say that again. Put your big girl panties on. <laughs> <laughs> you're overthinking it, it's not that deep, you misinterpreted it. And so you've learned not to embrace the small voice, the spirit, the intuitive self of who you are. And so you squash that and so when things happen, you don't know how to deal with them, so you just dismiss them. But what I've found or discovered as a colon hydrotherapist, mm, that knows. the gut is the, is the seat of emotions. It is. And when I administer a colonic to many of my clients, mm -hmm. it triggers. It triggers emotions. It triggers the past. And they, you know, then there's an emotional um, emittance, mm -hmm. should I say. Mm -hmm. yeah, Tears will fall, yeah. you know, or they will begin to really speak what's on their mind and what's in their heart and what they've been hiding yep. and repressing. Mm -hmm. So we definitely are mind, body, spirit. Dr. Reed, would you please share your story? Because I mean, I was up this morning, <laughs> I, where's my napkins? And I said, oh my God, I don't know if I could do this today because it triggered so much emotions, things that I knew, I, I, I know I've just not not dealing with, uh, to be honest yeah. with you, I've just repressed it, keep it, keep it moving, Argo, yeah. keep it moving, you know, you got this to take care and that to take care, yeah. you know, but you got to stop and breathe yeah. and exhale and go inside. Mm -hmm. Am I right? You have to. You have okay, to so to please, please tell your story. So, gosh, my story is so intricate. It's kind of hard to I know, know where to begin. I know, but you <laughs> wanted a baby. You wanted a baby. We'll you got there. married. We'll you start were there. married for seven years. I read mm -hmm. this book. I'm telling you. <laughs> and you, and you wanted to have a baby. Uh -huh. Okay, mm -hmm. so you went the IVF I way. Did. Okay, I did. And then from there you can go and, and tell. that was something. That was traumatic. Oh my Jesus. So. I got married when I was 19, okay. my first marriage, and it was kind of probably not the right thing to do, but I think it was a divine plan because I have beautiful children yes. from that experience. And then when I got a little older, I said, you know what? I want to have a love, and I want to have a family, and I want to I wanna do this the right way, whatever that meant, because I was married before. And I met this wonderful man, Medgar Reed, and we got married when I was 40. Mm -hmm. And that was a phenomenal marriage. And when we got married, we had agreed that yes, we would have more children and 40 is still relatively young yes. to conceive. And so seven years went by and we weren't able to conceive. And then one day, my husband says to me, so do you think we'll have any more kids? And I'm like, well, it hasn't happened yet, so we'll, we'll see. But prior to that, there was a dream. Mm -hmm. Should I tell them about the dream? Please. Oh, <laughs> so, please, you had this dream. So I have to tell you about the dream or the vision. Right, the vision. I was asleep, and I woke up, and I heard this little person. I saw the little person go, hi, Mom. My name is Melody. It's three of us. And I went back to bed. And when I woke back up, I said to my husband, that was weird. I had his dream.
And so he says, well, are we going to have kids or not? I'm like, I don't know. And so I started investigating what the opportunities were. And so we embarked on IVF, mm -hmm. in vitro fertilization. And I know you're going to think I'm crazy to do in vitro fertilization at age 40. But when you consider a lot of women mm -hmm. hold off their fertility dreams right. for their careers. Right. Mm -hmm. So by now I was established and this was my second marriage and I wanted to reestablish a new family. My children were already in college. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we went through IVF and the most miraculous thing happened. Were they, you 40 or 47? I was 47, 47. when this happened. Oh so okay. they used my own egg right. against okay. their own their judgment. They right. was like, no, I said, I'm a naturopath. My body's fine. Right. And it was. And it was. Okay. So I used my own eggs. Okay. My my husband used, they used his own, own, right. own specimen. Right, right. And we conceived the first, first that, try. That's awesome. And so I was so excited. That's awesome. But here's the sad part. Mm -hmm. I kept getting kind of browbeated about the statistics. Mm -hmm. There's no statistical data what's going to happen to you at 47. Our book stop at 45. We want to do all these invasive tests. Right. And so I allowed the chorionic villi, the chorionic villi sampling, okay. which meant they had to go into the cervix Sorry. through mm -hmm. the and collect the placenta. Mm -hmm. But when they did it through a the sonogram, mm -hmm. you could see it on the screen. There was a curve in my cervix, mm -hmm. and so they had to go in three times, wow. not one. Wow. And so what happens when you poke a water balloon? Yeah, I understand. So on 4th of July, right. a couple of weeks after that procedure, oh my. my water broke. Uh -huh. And so I never got a chance to see the fireworks, but I did see all that gush of right, water. Right, right. And so from the 4th of July through August the 12th, I was in the hospital on bed rest drinking two gallons of water a day. Wow. And they assured me that if I could hold my daughter in for 25 Five weeks, weeks. Uh -huh. she would survive. Right. Well, at 4, 10 in the morning, I called my husband. He, we lived across the street from the hospital. I said, she's coming, it's time. And I, I was in labor for three days. Wow. But since the doctors couldn't tell my contractions, right. they thought they were just, but she was little, she was right. only a pound. And I right. had this button, I kept pushing a button. Here's mm -hmm. a contraction. Mm -hmm. and they're like, your foot is contractions a minute mm -hmm. apart? I'm like, yes. And when they finally came and checked, I was dilated eight centimeters. Right, right. And so she was born at 4, 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. And I saw them lift her up and I was so proud. And my heart just swelled and I cried with joy. And I heard this squeal and my husband squeezed my hand. That was an indication that something was not right. Mm -hmm. And he said, now just redirect your focus. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize the doctor had to go elbow deep into wow. my cervix to pull out the placenta. I was just so excited right, right. to have my daughter. Um, I took a shower mm -hmm. and I went to the NICU to see her because she was only 25 weeks mm -hmm. and she was so beautiful. I fed her. She held my finger. I rubbed a little mm -hmm. knees and she, you know, she never opened her eyes except for once. Right. And then after I went and took a nap and came back to visit, the doctors came in the room and I said, they said, we have something to say. And I looked at them. I said, whatever you have to say, I don't want to hear it. You have to talk to my husband. Right. Because I didn't want to hear whatever right. it was. But I in knew your it was mind, bad. Yes, okay. And the, the dialogue I had, and it was very reverent, mm -hmm. but very direct. Mm -hmm. And it was cremation or burial. Wow. And so my mm -hmm. elation in a matter of hours went to shock. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was walking in a twilight zone. Wow. And I was kind of like... I was in a twilight zone. I, yeah, I know what shock <laughs> is. I, I, I can relate. Yes. I can relate. Yes. I can relate. I was in a twilight zone and I sang to my daughter. Mm -hmm. I held her. I, I rubbed her little back and I just held her close to me and I just held her like this and there's pictures mm -hmm. of me. Mm -hmm. And when I held her, I kissed her all over. I kissed her hands. I just want to inhale her little essence. Mm -hmm. And the last time that I went to start to kiss her again, I noticed she was blue. Mm. And then I said, does this mean she's gone? And they said, yes, let's call it. And they called it at 1.20 p.m. So she lived nine hours and 20 wow. minutes. So I don't know how long I was holding her mm -hmm. beyond mm -hmm. her passing right. because she right. was already blue. So right. she could have passed maybe a half hour and I didn't know. Wow. And so from that experience, I almost lost my mind. Yeah, yeah. I hyperventilated yes. a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought I was having a heart attack a lot. Mm -hmm. And then when I finally came out of it, I'm still actually going through it. I process it's it. It's been a about bit three years day. now, right? It'll actually be, be four, four years this okay, August. Come, okay. And so I'm still processing it. Wow. Now, your daughter was born on your husband's yes. birthday. <laughs> my daughter was born on August 12th, 2014 mm -hmm. at 4.10 a.m. My husband was born 
August 12th, mm. 1965 wow. at 10.30 a.m. Wow. in the same exact hospital. Wow, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. his he says that was the best birthday gift he could ever have. Mm -hmm. But now there's a, a a weird dynamic between celebrating his birthday, celebrating her birthday, but memorializing her passing. Right. right. So it's a weird thing that right. we kind of get over. So uh, yeah. in your your book, you you really this is a journal. Yeah. <laughs> of your experience, because as I was reading it, Doctor Reed, it was like. Oh my God! I'm, I'm. You're triggering all this. You know, I've had some losses. I mean, um, I tell you what, I probably never even told this to my family, but I'm gonna be transparent. Okay. I also um, wanted. I got married uh, the second time, and I wanted a child mm -hmm. for my husband. Okay, because mm -hmm. we. I have one daughter, mm -hmm. and I'd been. You know, we'd been trying for ten years. Mm -hmm. So he was in the military, and I was too. So. He's from Guam, the island of Guam. So I flew to the island of, of Guam, and he was in, we rendezvoused there because he was stationed in Korea. Mm -hmm. And he took me um, to a, an herbalist. The, on the islands, they call them witch doctors, mm -hmm. but, but mm -hmm. that, with yeah. a positive connotation, right, right? right? And because his sister had been, you know, had been trying to have babies and couldn't, uh, did all the, even IVFs, maybe back in the day or whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then she went to the, um, to the herbalist, the old lady, mm -hmm. and she got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went to her, she gave me some herbs. She couldn't speak a word of English, mm -hmm. but she gave me some herbal teas to take. And then she gave me an herbal poultice to insert into my rectum. And mm -hmm. she actually did an exam herself and mm -hmm. told my former husband that my uterus was retro mm -hmm. and I said well how did she know that mm -hmm. because the doctors at all all you know when mm -hmm. uh, when I had my GYN exam they always said that it was tilted right, right. so she told my husband oh she's going to get pregnant when you come back home mm -hmm. okay in six months so he came back home I didn't believe it because I've been trying for years and mm -hmm. years I didn't believe it it went through one year I said I'll try it when he came home I got pregnant but what happened was that pregnancy triggered for me mm. an experience that I had when I was pregnant with my daughter. Mm. I felt so depressed, so alone. I was young, mm -hmm. you, know, a, a, you know, a young mom, mm -hmm. and didn't really get the support mm -hmm. of, I did later, yeah, you know, but yeah. emotionally I felt rejected and abandoned and you're a bad girl and you're not married. Mm -hmm. All of those memories came back and then I was working full time for the government. I was also selling real estate at the same time. And I said, my husband's going to be away and I can't deal with being alone by myself and being pregnant and working these two jobs. E emotionally, I was a train wreck. Mm. Guess what happened? I had an ectopic pregnancy. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was in the tubes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it triggered. In your book, you talk about the triggers, mm -hmm. the emotional triggers. Yeah. That stopped that pregnancy because I was afraid mm -hmm. of being pregnant and being alone mm -hmm. and having to work two jobs, yeah. you know? Yeah. So this book, you know, is healing a lot of people. It's mm -hmm. helping a lot of people to go back into their past, to examine themselves, and to uh, reframe the story. Yes. Am I right? Yes. So now let's story. talk about the, the three R's that you mm -hmm. talk about in from panic to empowerment, and how the three R's really helps us to heal the mind, the body, and the spirit, because mm -hmm. we're more than just a physical being. Yes. And you, this is why I just, I love your approach to healing. You know, you are a doctor, but you, 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 you deal with the mind, your body, and the spirit. Mm -hmm. We're more than physical beings. We are. You know, we're spiritual beings first, mm -hmm. having a human experience. Yes. Am I right? You're right. So can you please elaborate on reframing? Because that gave me an opportunity to go back and reframe that yep. whole experience, yep. you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. So here's an interesting thing. Most people always say mind, body, and spirit, mm -hmm. but your mind is exactly what you can't rely on. Tell me about it, please. You can't rely on it. Even the Bible talks yeah, about being transformed by the renewing, renewing of, your of your mind. mind. Absolutely. And so you can't rely on your mind because here's why. Mm -hmm. From birth to seven, we are indoctrinated by our cultural experience. Mm -hmm. And that cultural experience can have some positive things, mm -hmm. but it can also have some very lasting negative impact. Absolutely. And so as a child, if you're told 
sit down and be quiet. Mm -hmm. Or never talk about anything that goes on in our house or never tell anybody your feelings or be private then that idea stays with you and it, after a while it no longer works and you can't figure out why your life is not working Absolutely. that's because what you believe is not what's really in reality because we've learned that things from the mind of a child right. Absolutely. and so our perspective of it gets really skewed mm -hmm. so the first thing is to and the three R's approach to right. feeling is to identify mm -hmm. that your spirit is the boss right. that's what you're reframing you're re you're reflecting on how do you feel mm -hmm. because your feelings is kind of a knowing mm -hmm. it's that intuitive thing mm -hmm. I knew something told me to make that right turn, but I didn't. How many times have we had that, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And so the spirit speaks to us through that knowing, right. and that's our emotions. Right. But they've been invalidated by things outside of mm -hmm. us, so we don't trust ourselves. Okay. You know, if you feel sad, the first thing you might say was, maybe I'm just overreacting, mm -hmm. or maybe I'm too sensitive. Well, maybe that's just your spirit giving you some information that you need to listen to in order to respond accordingly to an environmental stimuli. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that, and so what happens is you get all up in here. Mm -hmm. And so there's this story that plays out, and the story could be I'm unlovable, right. nobody likes me, uh, I can't be successful. Whatever the story is, you have to reframe the story. So how I was able to write this book and reframe the story for myself to help other people, I could continue to look at my experience as a tragedy mm -hmm. and never recover. Right. And, and start having heart problems, which I did, mm -hmm. start having kidney problems, start having hyperventilation and anxiety attacks and all that. I could have stayed there. Mm -hmm. Or I could have said, you know what, if it wasn't for my daughter coming, I would not have realized that all of my health problems and all the health problems that people come to me about are generated from repressed emotional hurt. And I can choose to say, you know what, my story is actually a beautiful story. Because I got a chance to do the impossible. I conceived at 47 years old yes. with my own eggs. Yes. My yes. baby was completely fine, but it was a medical mishap that caused my water to break. Right. Because the genetic testing proved that I was fine right. and she was fine. And your husband was and fine. And my husband was Absolutely. fine. Absolutely. And I never got an infection. Right. So right. there was no infection process right. that created that. Right. And so I said, but I got a chance to hold her. Right. She Absolutely. felt my heart. Yeah. She knew that she was loved from the moment that she was conceived because her parents deliberately did crazy things to get her here, right? <laughs> oh, and so wow. that, that trauma is now in a beautiful love story. Yes, and is. when I think about Melody, I, I get tearful because she was my, my baby, but I also am very grateful to have been the vessel right. To give birth to her because Melody's purpose is being fulfilled. Absolutely. If it was not for her birth and passing, these from Panic to Empowerment books would not have been written. Absolutely. They have would have So been would you say she had a divine purpose? And it only needed to take nine hours and 20 minutes. Absolutely. Maybe my purpose is 120 years. Right. Some other people's purpose is 17 Absolutely. years. We have this idea of what we think that time span should be, but we have to remember that the only reason why we have been given breath incarnated into a physical body mm -hmm. is to do the work of our Father. Absolutely. And He determines how long that will take. Absolutely. So every death is divinely planned. We all have to go, we just don't know how. Right. So we might think that one death is peaceful, another one is tragic, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it's still what the whole Heavenly Father said, Absolutely. this is your exit date, right. your job is done. Right. Well, that gives me and many other people, you know, solace. Yeah. It, it really does. Once you get past the grief oh, yeah. and, oh, and, 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 and the shock. Um, and I think it's on page 61, though, you say that many of us have been conditioned to think that death is final. Yes. Mm -hmm. You want to elaborate yes, on yes. that a little we, bit? We, we are, we've been conditioned that death is final, mm -hmm. but secretly we do things with the knowing that it isn't. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. If death is final, you wouldn't see fresh flowers on graves. That's right, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. If death was final, you wouldn't have um, pictures of your loved ones still up. Mm -hmm. And when you glance by them, you go, hi, good morning. I kiss Melody's picture. Mm -hmm. And when I kiss her picture, I don't feel like I'm kissing a picture. I feel like I'm kissing her. Absolutely. Right? Yes. And so secretly we know that it isn't, but we don't express it outwardly. And because we don't express it outwardly, the grief mm -hmm. of it becomes Absolutely. overbearing. Yeah. And, you know, in, in truth, we are spiritual beings. Yep. 
and uh, those souls that left are still here. It, they're still here and they're present with us. Yeah. There are times when I, I feel, as you were saying, you feel your daughter. Mm -hmm. you, I feel the presence of my grandfather. I feel the presence of those who've gone before me, mm -hmm. especially those who I held very close to my heart. Yes. Um, in the book, I think it was on page 95, you said you, you read a book and it was entitled Spirit Babies. Mm -hmm. Can you speak on that a little bit? A few years ago when I was really starting to be interested in pregnancy and babies, mm -hmm. I read a book called Spirit, and I didn't look for the book, it kind of found me, mm -hmm. and I read the book and basically it said that children or spirits choose their parents mm -hmm. and that babies, know they create a contract with the parent. They mm -hmm. feel whether they, the parent is ready. If the parent mm -hmm. isn't ready, then they decide that they want to cancel the contract and mm -hmm. they go back to heaven. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of your experience. Right. Mm -hmm. your, the spirit of your child yes. knew that you weren't ready. And Absolutely. so it said, gently, mom, I know you're not ready. I'm yes. going to come. I'm going to go and come back another time. Sometimes they come back to you and sometimes they come back to other family mm -hmm. members. Mm -hmm. And th with reading that book, it made me realize that we are just a, a part of this process, a very significant part. We're the vessels. But the connection is really a spiritual thing between a soul that God ordains and says, okay, it's your turn. And I believe, I don't know for sure, but the book has said something to the effect that the, the, the soul can say, well, I'm not ready to go yet, mm -hmm. and I'll wait a little longer until the person is ready, and then they come. Mm -hmm. I, I have my daughter, Diamond, that my sweetheart, that's my, my little mini-me. Yes. Diamond is 23. She's a researcher. Mm -hmm. And she says, Mom, this is going to sound weird. She says, but mm -hmm. I feel like I've come to you before. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's deep. And that goes in line with yes. Yes. that. She says, I can't explain yeah. it, mm -hmm. but I feel like I've come to you before. Right. Well, we only have a couple minutes left, mm -hmm. Dr. Reed. What are some tools that we can use to help us through the grieving process, and how can we grow beyond the grief? And for your final comments. So let's do grow beyond the grief. Yes. Growing beyond the, the grief is the most significant part yes. because you have to feel it first. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Allow yourself to feel it. Let it come in, let it burn. Because you know what? The, the, the lion is never as big when you see him face up right. and he evaporates as soon as you do. As long as we run away from the grief, right. it's going to chase us. And that's what we're really fearing. Right. Oh, am I going to handle it? You will handle it. Right. You will. Mm -hmm. And so when you embrace it and let it flow through you, then you can process the meaning of it. Right. And if the meaning doesn't edify you, mm -hmm. then find another way right. to make it beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. That's yes. how you get get through it. Absolutely. And I think that would be the same way for how do you deal with it in general. Just right. let it come in. Absolutely. And don't apologize uh, for the I, emotions when they come. You know, that was my my thought about this book, You're Unapologetic, mm -hmm. when it comes to really being transparent and telling your truth and your story. Because it's touched me and it's touched so many people. And I'm so grateful, Thank grateful you. that you are in my life and, and at this present time right here to share that awesome message. So give uh, our viewers the, your phone number where they can reach you yes. if they need counseling. Yes. Okay. So I, I'm, a, I'm a doctor of naturopathy. I'm the founder of Your Healing Place, but I consider myself a natural health coach, and I do it in a holistic way. So if you really want to be well, completely, holy, <laughs> then we deal with spirit, mind, and body issues. And so if that's something that you believe is going to help move your wellness journey forward, please feel free to give me a call at 443-288-6326. Or they can book a free consult, 30-minute phone consult on my website. That's drstephanyyhp.com. And I'll be more than happy to help you because if you're dealing with grief, I know for a fact you also have a lot of physical health problems. And so that's what we want to do. We want to give you the life that's well, well meaningful to work, to live with, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Life abundantly. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you for watching Your Health is Your Wealth. Remember, in this very present moment, we do have the power to take charge of our life and our health and make it an amazing day.